I want to walk you through the process of making a new lure designed and created by Brad Roberts who, as you can see here, fishes the Detroit River quite a bit for muskie. Uh, he uses a ton of different artificial uh, lures for, for vertical jigging in the river uh, in depths anywhere from 15 to 35 feet uh, and a lot of current. Uh, they oftentimes use like a Bondi style bait and uh, he had an idea for making a, a different type of lure based off of a, a gizzard shad that he found floating in the river. So let me walk you through the process of taking a real fish, making a mold of it, testing it out to make sure it's what you want, and then go ahead and making a production type mold where you can actually make lots and lots of lures. First thing we're going to do is make a mold box that fits just around the fish we want to mold. Here we're building a mold box. And we're mounting the fish vertically so we can do a one piece mold. The problem with the fish is it's really, really flimsy. So what we want to do is mount them vertically, but then we want to freeze them in the exact shape that we want to make the mold in. If the fish is lopsided or warped or curved, you got to know that that's the way that your finished piece and your finished lure is going to be. So it's very, very important to make sure the fish is perfectly positioned the way you want it to. Once we've frozen the fish in the exact position that we want, we assemble the mold box around it and seal it really well. We don't want any of the silicone to leak out. Because we don't have the luxury to make a two-piece mold where we clay up the original because the original is so soft and we need to freeze it, we're going to make a one-piece mold. We're going to use a high-strength two silicone rubber and we're going to make a, a perfect mold where we encapsulate the entire fish. Then we'll cut it out, pour a prototype, and see what it looks like. Here we're degassing the silicone. This isn't required, but it certainly helps. If you have the ability to do it, it's a big benefit. The concept is to put negative air pressure onto the mixed silicone, which expands the bubbles that you mixed in. When the bubbles expand, they'll float to the top, expanding the silicone, pop, and evacuate. It's very important to allow the material to collapse under its own weight under full vacuum. If you have to continue to burp the silicone to make sure it doesn't flow over the top of the container, you have not removed all of the air that you mixed in. Once it's collapsed under its own weight under full vacuum, let it sit in the vacuum chamber for another 20 to 30 seconds. Then you're ready to remove the mixed silicone from the vacuum chamber, pour it into your mold box, and allow it to cure. In this instance, we allowed the silicone to cure, refroze the fish to aid in demolding, and then we're ready to cut the master, or the fish, out of our silicone. Refreezing the fish keeps it a little bit cleaner and a little less messy. We cut the mold down a vertical seam, either the belly or the head. Then we simply remove the gizzard shad, in this case, out of the mold and clean the mold very well. We're now ready to work on making a first prototype for our jigging bait. So what we're going to do is we 
have a slot, a tube that we use some pop rivets, and wrap some lead weight around the pop rivets in the center core. So the line through this bait will run vertically. We heat up our Alumisol and pour it. We work some of the air bubbles up, then continue to fill the mold until it's full. A couple clamps help us hold the mold in the correct position while the Alumisol cools. As soon as the Alumisol cools, we're ready to demold our first prototype. Mixing a little Luma dust, we're going to make it a gizzard shad color. Luma dust is a very simple process. You simply powder the Alumisol or any Plastisol soft plastic bait into the color pattern that you want. Then with either a handheld torch or a heat gun, lock the color in by waving the heat over the soft plastic. This will fuse the color into the bait Here's the first prototype jigging it in a pool just so we can see kind of the action that it has. Now it doesn't have a rear prop which would give it a lot of stability but we're very happy with how it looked. Once we know we're on the right track we simply take some RC3 and we're going to make a hard master of our fish. So this time, instead of pouring Alumisol, we're going to pour RC3, fill the mold up completely, and let it harden. Approximately 10 minutes later, we're ready to demold the RC3. Trim off all the flash and start dialing in the bait to look exactly the way we want it. We still have all the scale patterns, but we need to fix the fins and the mouth. So using Sculpey, we simply sculpt a new mouth as well as a tail fin and repair the top fin just a little bit. Now we're ready to make a two-piece mold that we can use for production. We clay up the seam line to make a, a mold of the left and the right side and add some locators by simply using a drill bit. These dimples will help locate and align the two halves of the mold in its proper position every time we pour. Because we're making a two-piece mold, we want to use a little stiffer rubber that will have better dimensional stability. And there's not a lot of undercuts, so the quick set is a perfect silicone for this application. Mix up the quick set silicone in a 10 to 1 by weight ratio and pour it slowly over the master. The pin you see there is going to be used for the eyes. So we drilled through the master so we can set eyes into our soft plastic bait. Once the silicone cures, we remove the clay and hopefully it comes off in one piece as it did here. This makes cleaning the remaining clay off of the original much, much easier, but it still takes time. Make sure to clean off all of the clay, especially in the seam line. Once you've cleaned the clay off the original, it's very, very important to use mold release. Silicone will bond extremely well to another silicone. So before pouring the second half of your mold, 
make sure to apply a very, very liberal amount of mold release. If you don't have the UMR, use Vaseline. Here we've added just a little bit more dye to the silicone so you can see the two halves of the silicone a little bit more clearly and where the seam line will be. Once your second half of the mold has cured, go ahead and remove your mold box, remove the pin, and carefully separate the two halves of the mold. Remove any flash from the two halves of the silicone, remove your master, and now you have an exact two-piece rubber mold. We're now ready to start making production baits. So once again, using some tubing and some pop rivets, along with some lead and some brass wire so we can run that to the back of the bait which our rear uh, blade will be attached to. We can position the weight exactly where we want it in the mold which will then be in our baits. So the next step is to cut our vent holes as well as where we plan to pour the alumisol into our mold. So the two highest points are the two top fins. We're going to pour it from the very highest point on the back and allow the material to flow in there. Using a couple boards, we'll clamp the mold shut, heat up our alumisol, and once again pour it into our mold. We tilt the mold slightly to allow it to flow back into the thinner tail section and come out the vent. And fill the mold up completely. The alumisol is going to shrink as it cools. Here you can see the alumisol that was cooling shrank. So once again we top it off until it's completely filled. A part this size will take 15 to 20 minutes to cool down before demolding. And once it's cooled, we're ready to remove it from our mold. Here you can see the inner weight system as well as the brass wire running all the way back to the back tail where the blade will be attached. Using a pair of scissors, trim off the pore hole and we're ready to add the eyes. Using a little tubing and the large diameter eyes painted red on the back of them, we simply super glue them into our bait. With the scale pattern still intact, we're ready to add our blade and start decorating our bait with a dry erase marker and a luma dust. You can also blend the Illumidus to come up with custom colors that nobody else has. This gives you the ability to make custom metallic and very pearlescent type colors, simply not found in other baits. Once you've settled on your color pattern, once again, use heat and lock in the Luma dust into the surface of the soft bait. We're ready to add the hooks and go out and fish. This was another one of our original baits that was water tested and then fished with.
This is Brad and his dad out on the Detroit River in late June. Enjoying a, a morning of musky fishing. One of the big benefits that Brad wanted to design in this lure was the wire through design. His leader and the hook are simply not attached to the lure. This allows the fish to be hooked up and the lure to not interfere. As you can see, there's only one single treble hook hooking that fish. And the bait is already clear and the fish is unharmed. This aids for a quicker release, a quick picture, and a safe return for the fish. He got cut up pretty good. Spawny. There he goes.